The transaction performance of a trading workstation must be completely spot on, as well as the user experience must be exceptional. And that is especially true when traders are in the middle of a hot market and things have to execute perfectly. My name is Steve Shaw. I'm a senior product manager on the Compute BU, one of the principal architects of the technology. And I'm Zach Bidding. I'm on our global sales engineering team and I've been working in end user computing and, and the trader platform for about the last nine years and worked with Steve to help develop this solution. We're not new with this technology. The first trading platform that we implemented was in 2018. We also implemented a virtualized platform in 2020 for one of the largest EU hedge funds. They are now taking that entire environment worldwide. The point here is that trading in a virtual environment is fit, still fairly new. There are a lot of things that we have to do to enhance the performance and the user experience so that everything operates very quickly. So all of that together means there's a lot going on for the traders on their machines. But really at the end of the day, um, their experience, the trader's user experience is driven largely by the same thing that drives a lot of end user experience in, in this kind of computing, and that's single threaded performance. A lot of their interactions with the machine, uh, how they feel about it, it's all gonna be driven by single threaded performance. So that's key here. So over the last several years, a lot of our banking customers moved to the HPE Moonshot based solution because it gave them a whole slew of data center benefits. Things like security, a better management paradigm, flexibility of access, most importantly, the performance advantages of moving from a desk side workstation with some amount of latency to the data center to a data center hosted solution where they really got the benefit of being right next to where all the action is happening. Um, they got those benefits while maintaining the one-to-one -one bare metal relationship with the hardware that they were familiar and comfortable with. Approximately a year ago, um, we were brought in together to come up with a solution to replace our Moonshot bare metal trading platform that was widely adopted in the financial industry. And what we wanted to do is take a virtualized implementation of the technology and be able to provide the same user experience that we could provide with um, a virtualized solution over the bare metal solution. So now that we're looking at a solution beyond Moonshot, we're looking at a virtualized solution, we have to be aware of some of the common objections that we get from our customers in terms of virtualization. And the first of those is really around end user experience, really the performance that they can get out of this system. We have to keep in mind that our banks are often using commodity VDI today for user groups other than traders. And so they might be familiar with VDI from that perspective where it's oversubscribed and really built for density instead of performance. Um, and sometimes they're even running hyper-converged for those user groups. But here we have to approach it very differently as Steve has talked about a bit. Trading is unique in the virtual environment in that the normal things that we do with virtual desktops and virtualization is to use oversubscription and to make the servers run at very high uh, utilization rates. That's exactly what we don't want to do here. So there's definitely a lot of apprehension and misconceptions around virtualization, especially from the banks and especially for these high-end users. Um, so we want to talk through specifically what we did to make this solution work for this user group. But first, just a little bit of context setting, I think. You know, what, what is a trader? What does a trader look like? What are they doing? So traders, they're researching, they're doing market analytics, um, they're monitoring and predicting how the markets will move, and then at the end of the day, what they're doing is they're executing trades, right? They're buying and selling based off of that. And so because of this, they're making the banks a lot of money. They're big revenue generators, and therefore generally what they ask for in terms of resources, they get. So the trader's environment, what does it look like? They often will have multiple monitors. It could be up to eight 1080p monitors or a few 4K monitors, and the monitor will all be filled with lots of information, right? So there's um, financial terminal apps like Bloomberg Terminal or Refinitiv Icon. They'll have local apps, uh, it could be Microsoft Office or communication apps like Teams. Um, they'll have web apps as well and then some streaming video uh, like news. So how did we make virtualization run at the same speed as a bare metal solution? There's a lot of things that we've done here. First, we're using very fast CPUs and we're allocating a lot of cores to those CPUs. Secondly, we have plenty of RAM and that's important to prevent paging, but also give us the ability to build caches into the virtual machine to uh, accelerate 
storage, performance, and so forth, even though that is kind of a secondary thing. We're using an H.264 codec, and that codec uses the least amount of CPU of any of the codecs we could possibly use. It also tends to conserve on bandwidth. GPU frame buffers can vary a lot depending on whether you're using 1080p or UHD or 4K monitors. And we have the ability to adjust to any of those kinds of situations simply and effectively and allow you to switch from one specific deployment to another fairly easily. We're also using hardware GPU video encode and decode. So for Teams, encode is happening in hardware. And for things like um, Bloomberg feeds or Reuters feeds and the video feeds, we're also decoding that in hardware and we can handle dozens and dozens of video feeds at each location if we have to. We're using NVMe over TCP for storage. Um, that's the lowest latency that we can possibly get. But then again, remember, storage is not really that important from a performance standpoint. You know, hyperconverged is supposedly really good for because you have local storage. But in this particular situation, a trader wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a hyperconverged environment and a traditional NVMe over TCP um, storage methodology. It would be the same basically for them. So beyond just performance, what are some other reasons that we might want to go with a virtualized solution here instead of a bare metal solution? So I'll start with simplicity of the solution. And as I mentioned earlier, going with a GreenLake solution here allows us to deliver to the customer uh, a vessel for their Windows operating system, a VM that essentially to them is the same as a bare metal um, system, except it comes with benefits from a management perspective, right? So because we're centralized in vCenter now, as opposed to using a somewhat bespoke management system for a bare metal system, um, anybody can walk in and, and manage this that's familiar with vCenter. It's much easier to hire resources and find resources who are comfortable with vCenter than it is to train somebody up on a moonshot management system or whatever management system might replace that. And then from an operational perspective, we really have a lot more flexibility with a virtualized solution here. Um, from a sizing perspective, with a bare metal solution, you're sort of stuck with the CPU that you start with, right? If you get an eight core CPU, that's the CPU that's in the system until it's retired. But in a virtual world, we can assign eight vCPUs today and 12 vCPUs tomorrow and 16 vCPUs the week after that. So depending on changing user needs and application requirements, we have a lot of flexibility to fit different user groups into the same hardware platforms. There's also a lot more user mobility and image portability um, in a virtual world as well. So in a, in a hardware-based system, uh, in a bare metal world, it's difficult to move a user's operating system from one machine to another, and there's a lot of drivers that will be different that go along with that, and we've seen lots of complicated processes to, to make up for that. Whereas in a, in a virtualized environment, it's rather simple to move from one machine to another. You can even move between CPU architectures if you need to, uh, and it's pretty easy to do that. Another area that, that virtual makes this easier for us is with backup and restore. Um, so in a bare metal world, we often had customers who were buying duplicate moonshot systems as the easiest way to backup and restore those systems and to give us some level of high availability. But in the virtualized world, there's a whole slew of backup and restore options uh, like Zerto that we can offer that really make this simple and quick to recover and really a much better story than a bare metal approach. And then finally, from a storage perspective, Steve mentioned the NVMe over TCP. We're talking about real enterprise grade storage here with lots of fault tolerance built in. Um, you know, it's great performance to start with, but then we really have a much better fault tolerance and, and high availability story with remote storage that can, can take a few disks failures without skipping a beat versus local single drive. The primary objective is to maximize trading transaction speed. There's nothing else that we're worried about. We're not worried about storage. We're not worried about anything else, but that connection to the market and the speed with which we can make trades is critical. So what does that require? Um, a non-blocking architecture. Normally we would design a VDI implementation to have some oversubscription depending on the use case. This is not the case here. We want absolutely all resources dedicated to a user to run constantly, consistently fast, and also to assure that we're not letting any kind of transaction sit in a queue someplace waiting for CPU to process. We also want to make sure that we have very fast network capability so that there's no blocking inside the, the network connection itself. 
And then finally, what we want to do is, is take a step better than with a bare metal implementation and actually take a look at um, how we recover from a failure. So if, um, if a bare metal device goes down, the simple fact of the matter is it's going to take quite a while to get it back up. We want to take that half hour, 45 minutes down to a couple minutes at most. A lot of our customers are moving still from a desk side PC to the data center. And so by moving from, from the desk to the data center, we really gain that client server application performance advantage by reducing latency there. So some of our customers will be bare metal already in the data center. They won't see that additional benefit. But if we know anyone who's still using desk side PCs, there's a big benefit to moving into the data center. So with all that in mind, Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about tuning this to get the best performance? It's one of the key things that I think is really important. Servers are very complex. And so many things inside a server can get out of balance, can have certain places where bottlenecks are introduced and so on and so forth. So one of the key points that we've tried to do with this platform is to assure that we've optimized things like network MTUs so that we're not gonna have uh, any kinds of drops and retransmits there or fragmentation occurring. The BIOS is set to maximum performance. However, that would use a lot of electricity if it wasn't under control of VMware. We make sure that that's tuned correctly so that when a virtual machine becomes idle, it actually will stop consuming power and actually kind of power down until it starts being used again. Hyperthreads are enabled, turbo mode is enabled, so that you have the ability to maximize performance. Most of the time these CPUs will be operating in turbo mode anyway, so you're gonna get maximized performance out of the CPUs themselves. You also, with Windows, you have to kind of be cognizant of the fact that there are a lot of various things inside of Windows that will introduce wait states in various places. You know, for example, looking for um, CD or DVD ROM drives and things of that nature that don't exist. We have to make sure that we tune our Windows implementation to make sure that none of those kinds of wait states ever get introduced into the environment at all. We size vCPUs to equal a physical core, so that that means that you never have any kind of transaction waiting for CPU. So your CPU ready statistic is always at zero. We also want to size the vCPU environment to match the virtual NUMA environment so that we don't introduce wait states and memory bandwidth issues into the transaction speed. Again, everything here is on the network and must happen at the fastest speed possible. We will also use VMware's enhanced VXNet environment and actually tune that to make sure that we have very large buffers so that there's never a wait state inserted in the network connection itself. So that's a quick sort of high level overview of how we can deliver better than Moonshot performance and experience for traders on our HPE GreenLake Trader platform. For more information, follow this QR code, which will take you to hpe.com.